Hi, I am Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto, and in today's lecture, we will discuss about the programming of the binary search tree. We will first see how to create the binary search tree iteratively. Then we will convert that to the binary search tree creation recursively. In the next lecture, we will discuss about how to construct the height balance search tree, that is the table tree. So now let's look at a scenario. So as you must be knowing that the binary search tree is a kind of the tree wherein if we have the elements in the nodes of the tree, then the smaller information comes towards the left of the parent and the larger information comes towards the right of the parent. Similarly, if I have any information, let's say 70, for the insertion of the data item 70, we will start our search from the root node. Since 70 is less than 100, so I will go towards the left. And since 70 is larger than 50, so I will insert 70 towards the right of 50. Similarly, if I have to insert a data value 120, since 120 is larger than the root, so I will move towards the right. And since 120 is less than 150, so it will come towards the left of 150. In case I have to insert a data item, say 60, I will search, I will start searching from the root node and will find out the appropriate position for the insertion of this data item 60. Since 60 is less than 100, so I will come towards the left. And since 60 is larger than this, so I will come towards the right. And since 60 is less than 70, so I will insert this 60 on the left of the data item 70. So I hope this must be clear to you that for insertion of any data item in the binary search tree, I need to traverse the tree until I reach a position which is the appropriate position for the insertion. And every insertion takes place as the leaf mode. For writing the algorithm for the insertion, let's say I have the root node denoted by T. I'm taking two temporary pointers. Let's say one is P, which is pointing to the root node. And let's say I have a Q, which is always the parent of P. If I'm starting my search from the root node and P is at the root node, Q will be null because there is no parent of node P or there is no parent of the root node. Let's say I have to insert a data item 65. For insertion of the data item 65, I will make the comparisons of the current node with the data item 65, which is to be inserted. If the data item that is to be inserted is less than the data item of the current node, I will move towards the left. Otherwise, I will move towards the right. So if I make a comparison of root node that is information of P with 65, 65 is less. So I will make a movement towards the left side and P comes on the left node of the root. If I am moving towards the root, if I'm moving towards the left node, Q will come on this node where P was earlier. Now in this case, P is here and Q is the parent node of P. So before moving P, I will make shift this Q to point where P is currently. I again make the comparison of 65 with the data item of P. And since 65 is larger than P or larger than the information of P, I will have to move towards the right. But before moving to the right, Q comes at the place where P is and then P moves towards the right. So now the position of Q and P are like this. And Q is the parent of P. 65 is less than the information of P node. So I will have to move towards the left. But before moving to the left, Q comes where P is and P moves towards the left. So after this movement, 
Q is at 70 and P is at node 60. Then if I have to insert the 65, I make a comparison of 65 with the data item of P node. 65 is larger than 60, so I will have to move towards the right. This node, the P node is a leaf node and this leaf node will have its left and right pointers as null. So if I make a movement towards the right, P will become null. And as you know, before moving the P, Q will come at the node where P is currently. So when I make a movement of P, P becomes null and Q is at 60. So my search will stop whenever P becomes null. Once P has become null, I will make the actual insertion. Since 65 is larger than the information of the Q node, I will insert a new node as a leaf towards the right of Q. So 65 will get inserted here. So I hope you must have understood that we are making a search and we are doing the search until P becomes null. The moment P becomes null, I will make the insertion of the new node either towards the left of Q or towards the right of Q, depending on if the information to be inserted is less or greater than the information of Q node. So now let's write this in the form of an iterative procedure. And let's say the operation is BST insert. Here I say T is the root nodes address and X is the data item which is to be inserted. So from my side, I will take a P which will be at the root node and a Q that will be null initially because there will be no parent of the root node. Then I will make the comparisons. I will search the appropriate position for the insertion and this search process will go until P becomes null. So if the information to be inserted is less than the data item of P node, I will go towards the left. Otherwise, I will go towards the right. Either I go towards the left or I go towards the right, I will have to shift the Q at the position where P is currently. So this is a common statement, whether I move towards the left or right, Q will have to move one step lower. It means at current position where P is. Once this loop finishes, I will be in the position to insert a node. So let's say a comparison is made between the data item of the Q node and X. So if X is less than the data item of Q, then I will insert a node towards the left of Q. So let's say there is a function make node which creates a leaf node with information X and whatever node is created that is set towards the left of Q. If X is not less than Q dot data, then I will make the insertion towards the right of Q. So this is the process of insertion for the binary search tree. And I have written this code iteratively. Now let's try to write this on the code block. So I take a new empty file and let's save this as UBST dot C. To write this, I need two header files, the standard input output dot H and the standard library dot H. And then I will have to create a structure for the node and the structure of the node will contain a data item. Let's say we are considering the data item is of integer type. The structure of the node will be like the, the doubly linked list. So there will be two pointers 
struct node star left and struct node star right. So once the nodes structure has been created, we need to write a make node function which will create a leaf node. So let's say x data item has been passed to this function and this will create a node. So I uh, am having or I'm declaring a temporary pointer P which will keep the address of the newly created nodes. Newly created node or the memory for the newly created node or memory for the new node can be created by malloc. Whatever memory has been created, let's typecast this such that only no type of pointer can take this address. Now, after creating the memory for this node, I will set the data item of this node as X. And since this is going to be the leaf node, its left will be null. Its right will also be null. And I will return this. The node has been created. Now it's a turn for writing the insertion algorithm. So I'm writing the BST insert algorithm. And in the BST insert algorithm, I will be given the address of the root node. And a data item to be inserted. So let's say X is the data item to be inserted. From our side, I will take a P and a Q pointers. Q will be null initially. And P will take the address of the root node. And then I will make the traversals. So while P is not null, my traversal will progress. I will first shift the Q at the current position of P. And then a comparison if X is less than P dot data, P will move towards the left. Otherwise, P will move towards the right. Once P becomes null, it's the actual time for the inversion. So if X is less than Q dot data, the insertion will take place towards the left of Q. So the make note function is called and the X data item is passed here. Otherwise, the insertion will take place towards the right of Q node. The make note function is called with the data item X. So this way, the insertions can take place since this function is not returning anything. So I just made the void as a return type of this function. Now, if I have created the binary search tree, then how to test if the binary search tree created is correct? So the best way is to perform the in order traversal. In the in order traversal, I will pass the address of the root node. And if this key is not null, then I will first call the in order traversal towards the left of T. And then the data item will be printed. And then the in order traversal will be called for the right subtree. So this is the left data and right. Now the in order traversal is complete. This function also does not return anything. So the return type should be void. Let's look at the main function. In the main function, I will have to create a root node. Root will be null initially because it will not contain any node. 
let's create the first node as the root node and just taking a random information let's say the root node is created with the data item 100 and then for every other insertion i will call the bst insert function so in the bst insert function i will have to pass the root node and the data item to be inserted so let's call multiple bst insert function with the different different data values Likewise, we have many nodes which have been inserted. Finally, I will call the in order function, in order traversal function. And we'll test whether the function or whether the insertion function is working properly. So now there is a change that I want to make since this BST insert function is making the changes in the binary history. In order traversal does not make any change in the binary history. So since the changes are made through the function, so I will have to pass the address of the root node, it means ampersand root. Similarly, the changes will be made in the definition also. In the definition, since the address of a pointer is passed, so this will be double star t and p is equals to star t. The rest of the things remains the same. Now let's run this and check if this works fine. Fine. So you can see that the insertions took place nicely and we are able to find out the information in the ascending sequence. This is the property of the binary CST that if you give it or uh, sorry, if you print the uh, in order traversal of the binary CST, this will give the numbers in the ascending sequence. Now, since this is done, let's now understand how to write the recursive code for the binary CST. The recursive code for the binary CST has to be very, very interesting because this will be used directly as a base for the creation of the able tree. Now, for writing the recursive code, let's say I have a binary search tree like this. And you have to insert a node, let's say 40 in this binary search tree. So for insertion of a node binary uh, 40 in the binary search tree or 40 information in this binary search tree, you will start your search from the root node. And if the information if this root node is not the place where the information should be inserted, so I will either search towards the left or will search towards the right. Since this, this x information is less than the information of the current node, I will insert in the left. And the process that will be involved for insertion in the left will be same as what we did for the root node. Similarly, if this information would have been 140, then I would have come to the right and must have searched the appropriate position for the insertion as we did for the root node. So it means whether I'm going towards the left or going towards the right, I'm trying to search the position for the insertion recursively. So that's the base for here. And now let's say if I have called the insertion function with root is equals to null, it means that I want to create a node with the X information and I will say that this is the root. There was no other node earlier. So I will say that the only node created will be the root node. So I will make this thing in the mind or you can say that this may work as the base condition. So this is the BST recursively, let's say. And in this BST recursively, T is passed as the address of the root node. And then the X data item is to be inserted. So what I'm saying here, if t is null, it means there are no nodes initially, or t is null, it means uh, with the subtree starting at t, there is no other node, then I will create a new node with the information x, and I will say that this is the t. 
But if t is not null, I will make the searches. So searches will be made according to the information x. So if x is less than the data item of t node, then I will go to search in the left. So I will call the BST recursive function with the address of t dot left and the information x to be inserted. Similarly, if x is not less than t dot data, then I will search towards the right for the insertion. So I will call the recursive function BST recursive with the address t dot right and the information x that is to be inserted. Fine. So this is the way how we are finding out the appropriate position for the insertion. Now, there are more things to learn. Let's say we have the tree which is already set up to some level. Let's say we have a 30 here. And let's say we have a 70 here. Let's say we have a 190 here. In case we have to insert a data item, let's say 65. For insertion of the data item 65, T is the root node and we have been given the address of this to the BST recursive function. So since X is less than 65, uh, 100, then I will move towards the left. Now the recursive function makes this node ST. And then since 65 is greater than this uh, uh, 50, so I will move towards the right to search and the recursive function makes this node ST now. And since this 65 is less than the information of this node, so I will have to move towards the left. The moment I move towards the left, the recursive function will make this as null. And since this t is null, this part of the function will work. t is null, I will create a node with the information 65. So let's make a node with the information 65. And this node has been created and t is here at the newly created node. T is equals to make node. But this has to set, this has to be set somewhere. Where will I set this? I will set this to left of the previously called function. And the for previously called function, the root was t. So I will set this new node towards the left of the 70. For setting this, the function which is creating a new node, the only node, should return this t such that I have the address of the newly created node and that can be set towards the left of this node. So the two things are required here. When the function finishes, I should be returning the t. And another thing is that whenever a new node is returned or new node created is returned, on this side, it should be set towards the left of t. And if this condition is not true, this should be set towards the right of this node. So I hope this recursive function must be clear to you. I'm just giving a brief introduction of this once again. So if the t is null, I will create a new node and I will consider this node as t. And finally, I will return this t. If this x otherwise means t is not null, then if x is less than the t dot data, I will call the recursive function with the address of the left node. And whenever this will return the address of the node, I will set this towards the left of t. Now, if this x information is not less, so I will call the BST recursive function with the address of the right node. And whenever this will return an address, I will set towards the right of the t. Now, the very interesting fact is remaining here for understanding that since we are, we are always returning t as the uh, outcome of the BST recursive function. So if I have returned t from here, so I have set this node towards the left of the earlier call t. And then if I am calling the recursive function from here, this would have returned this t. So I must have set the right, this, this t towards the right of the previously called t. Towards the right of 50, we already have a 70. In case we set this again, there should be no problem. So t dot right can be set once again. Similarly, while calling the previous function or while going towards the previous function, 
when this will return this will return the address of the now i can set this node towards the left of this 100 so towards the left of the 150 is already set if i set it again there should be no problem and finally i will return this root node or the address of this root node so calling function will always accept this address of the root node so now let's write this on the code block So I'm writing a new function here, which is the PSD recursive. In the recursive, BST recursive, I have the address of the root node and the integer data item that is to be inserted. What we need here, we just need to check the condition. If T is null, then you should make a new node with the information x and this should be t otherwise if x is less than the data of the t node then i should call the recursive function the bst recursive is the name of the function and t dot left is passed here and the data item x to be inserted. Otherwise, BST recursive with the address of right and the information x that is to be inserted. Finally, I will return this. So since this is this function is returning the root nodes address, so the return type of this function has to be struct node star. Now come to the main. In the main, we need to make some settings. For example, we are calling the BST insert function. but BST has been called recursively. So BST recursive and root node is passing, root node is, root node is being passed here and the information to be inserted. So let's say we are passing the information 100 here and this BST recursive function will return the address of the root node so that is accepted in the root. Let's call this function multiple times. So let's say 50 is passed, 150 is, 160 is passed, 120 is passed, 70 is passed, then 10 is passed, 25 is passed. After this inversions, I will call the in order function just to test if my BST recursive function is working properly. So here you can see that the BST recursive function is also working very fine. The informations have been printed in the ascending sequence. So I hope you must have understood the process of the inversion in the binary search tree, both by the iterative procedure and the recursive procedure. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the AVIL tree and we'll see that how can we write uh, the AVIL tree inversion process with taking the binary search tree as it is. Thanks for watching.